This video will be more focused on those doing fabrics. So whether you're using photometric stereo or just using single photos, you can use the pattern recognition tool inside of Art Engine to tile your samples. Even if you aren't working with fabrics, I will be talking about different seam removal methods that will give you a better understanding of how Art Engine works. Okay, I'm going to first start off by using some samples that I've got from textures.com. So the first one we're going to look at is a plain fabric like this. So you notice just by looking at the tiling mode, um, there's still quite a bit of lighting information on the sample that we have. So the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the lighting. So we're going to use the gradient removal tool to do that. And what that's going to do is essentially just equalize the, the image out as best as possible. And the next thing we can try is just cropping this. So if you want to do a square crop, just crop, just hold control while you adjust the widget. So let's just do a crop like that. Um, cool. So now I have a crop, a square crop, um, but obviously there's seams over here. So your first inclination will probably be to use your seam removal tool and let that run. Now the seam removal is really, really good for things like soil and mud and you know ground surfaces. Uh, when it comes to things like fabrics, um, more noisier fabrics, there's some issues that are going to show up. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So now you'll notice that along the seam line here, it kind of looks like, kind of just like garbles up the data a little bit. And the way that I usually will view this a bit easier, so I'm just gonna throw levels onto it and just really crank up the low and highs. And I'm just using this as a debug just so I can see what's going on. So you'll see that there's this kind of noisy pattern going around the edges here, which is not what we want. Okay. So the seam removal tool is great. Um, for samples like this, it's not the most ideal. So there's a couple other ways that we can kind of address this. Um, what we want to use instead is something called the mutation structure. Okay, so I know there's two mutation nodes. We're gonna use mutation structure. And what that's going to allow us to do is I'm just gonna set the output resolution. We're just gonna do 1K for now. And I'm just gonna pop this straight into this node and just execute it at default values. And we'll just see what it does. And I'm just gonna put in a levels as well, just so we can check the, the resulting borders. Cool. So if we zoom back, that's actually looking pretty good now, right? So it's actually maintaining again, some of the structure um, from the original image. But of course, if I look a little bit closer uh, where the seam line is, you'll still see that kind of like fringy, kind of garbled up data along the seam edges. And just to check, we're just gonna place this into our levels node and we kind of like really crank this up. You'll start to see it even a little bit more. So um, it was a lot better than your seam removal but it's still not really like perfect. So this is really going to be a lot more subjective into what you think is going to be acceptable for your final output. Um, so instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a mutation structure again, okay? And we'll just set our output to 1K for now. And we'll just pop in our sample again. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the pattern map area. So I'm gonna turn this on and what this is going to allow you to do is essentially do pattern recognition. So if I just leave everything at default and hit patch detection, it's gonna go through the image and just find all the repetitive patterns inside of it. Now for this to work successfully, I believe you have to have around three to four or even more than that um, repetitive patterns in the original sample for this to actually pick up correctly. Um, so once that's run, you'll notice that it actually picked up all these like blue squares and these are uh, samples from the analysis that's going to use all of these little extra samples to kind of like recompute into a tileable image. So we're going to let that compute and it's going to go and output at this dimension based off of those samples. So now when I look at this final output, this is actually looking a lot better. Everything's a lot more even and a lot more smooth. And then we're just going to do our test again. 
so we're just going to bring up our highs and lows and you'll see then now when I look and zoom back everything is nice and smooth across the board uh, so if we look at the previous one you will see that it's kind of splotchy along the seam border if we look at our first one which was just seam removal it gets even worse that way right so for a pattern like this definitely want to try and use the mutation structure either on its own without a pattern map or if it has more of a defined pattern like what we see here we can try the auto detection and patch detect and then I'll recompute based off of those patches. Now what if we're working with a more complex pattern? So something like this. Now just a rule of thumb, the first thing that we always will do is try to remove any gradations or lighting from the original sample. So I'm just going to use a gradient removal just to equalize the image out. And then we'll go ahead and use our mutation structure like before. This time we're going to use an output of 4K. And let's go to the pattern map. And as before, we just do an automatic patch detection. Now, due to the complexity of this pattern compared to the previous one we did, I already know for a fact that this is probably not going to auto detect correctly. So what we can do instead is, after this warning here, so it says no matching pattern found, what we can do is use the neural match and then if we run the patch detection, what this will do is trigger the neural network to find the patterns within the image. Now one thing to note that this does take a little bit longer to compute and it also will use a lot more VRAM as well. So you'll notice in my top right corner, you'll see my VRAM kind of move up and down and it might actually spike to red like it did just there as it does its analysis pass. But what this will do is we'll actually give you a matching pattern. So there's only a handful of patches. So you'll see that patch count says two. So it found two repeating patterns. And I'm just going to execute that as I did before. Now, one thing to note with these patches, they're rectangular in shape. Now, the problem with that is it's trying to use a rectangular patch to recompute into a square image. Now, if you're familiar with doing image processing, that's kind of difficult just due to you know getting power of two pixels from rectangular images. And what will happen is you'll get something like this. This is pretty cool. It is tiling um, quite nicely, but it is a bit squished for, for what I'm trying to do. Um, so instead, you know, I mean, if you're happy with this, you know, we can kind of move on. But instead, what we can do is go down to world scale. And by default, um, it's going to take the aspect ratio of the input, which is over here, and it's going to output it to, obviously, um, a square or even number um, for width and height. So this is outputting to 500 by 500 from this input value here. Um, so what I found that if you actually type in the lowest value, something like this, so the input height was 375, I'm going to change my output to also 375 uh, for both width and height. And then if I recompute that, um, this will essentially kind of preserve more of the aspect of the original image better. Um, and this is really important for a pattern like this because we actually have uh, repeating character uh, prints on the image. And if those things get stretched, it's quite actually quite noticeable. Um, but now that we have those settings in there, we have a much more, uh, a smaller repeat of the pattern. Um, but I think that's totally fine because we're just going to tile this within our uh, render app afterwards. Um, but the aspect ratio of all the characters are remain intact from the original one, as opposed to the stretch one we had before when I left this at, at 500 by 500. So if you ever find that things are stretching after you do a patch definition, um, just go in here and try a different input height and width. Um, and usually you can just try to use the lowest value from your input um, into the output. And that should hopefully preserve uh, the aspect ratio of your original image. In the previous two examples, I was only working with the color map. Now, if you're bringing images from uh, photometric stereo, you're probably going to have a color map and a normal map like I have here.
Uh, so I just wanted to show that this does work across all maps, the mutation structure. So what it'll do is it'll recompute all the different channels you have in there. I only have two currently, um, but it will work across whatever maps you have in your composed material. So the situation with this sample here is it's not square. Um, so I'm going to use the mutation structure like we've done before. I'm going to click on pattern map. Um, the auto definition is for some reason not picking up the plaid pattern that I want to repeat. Um, I also tried it with a normal match and that also didn't find any repetitions for some reason. Now, if that's the case where the auto definition is not working, it's not really picking anything up, we can always just go and grab the widget manually and just select the area that you know that it's going to repeat across the entire material. And I'm just going to disable neural, neural match for now because I'm doing it manually. And I'm just going to hit patch detection. And what that's going to do is essentially aid the process in finding recognized patterns just by manually using the, the Dropbox there. So I'm just going to execute. And now it's picked up these samples and will recompute the material into a tileable version that's uh, 2K by 2K for both the color map and the normal map. You'll see that it's tiling. So this last section here is going to be me working with uh, random samples from my phone. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is use gradient removal to remove any lighting. Um, the next thing that I'll generally will do is just try to straighten out my pattern if it's not completely straight. So this is just what I call preparing the data. Um, always try to do your fixes before putting it in any, any seam removal or mutation nodes. And I'm just going to crop a section of that out. And when I'm doing the crop, I'm just trying to find an area where, you know, there's no defects or there's nothing kind of like weird going on in my pattern. That way, when I do a, a patch detection and pattern recognition, it's going to just find good data to work with. And for the samples that I do here, I'm actually just using the manual definition. So I don't really use the auto um, on these. Um, it does work on these patterns, but I tend to prefer to just use the manual definition um, because you know, if it's really recognizable, it just gives it a better chance uh, when it recomputes to reassemble it into an in, in proper way. So that one's looking pretty good. Uh, same process here, just remove the lighting using gradient removal. Always be careful, um, don't use too much gradient removal because you're gonna lose a lot of color. And we'll put that straight into mutation structure. And um, same process as before, I'm gonna use the manual box and just define one of these hexagon patterns and do the patch detection that way. So I'm mean, using this method is, is pretty quick to do when you have these really defined patterns using the manual one. Um, if, it, if it's something a little bit more kind of like noisy, you would definitely want to try just using the auto detect. Um, but for these specific patterns, I'm using the manual box to find the pattern. Again, you know, gradient removal, free transform just to straighten it out a little bit. Um, always recommend to take these photos properly, but these were actually from uh, pillows, so they had some curvature to them, so it's a bit difficult to capture. And mutation structure, I'm just going to define the pattern manually again, and I can just patch detect and then run the mutation structure to tile it. Great, so I hope that helps uh, for those of you who are working with textiles and fabrics. Um, mutation structure is really good for specifically fabric materials. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.